an update on the power grid for you. And if you thought we were going to escape load shedding for the long weekend, think again. Stage 3 load shedding implemented at 8 last night and will remain in place until further notice. Yeah, ESCOM says this is due to three breakdowns and the fact that it's been unable to replenish its pump storage dam levels sufficiently for the week ahead. Power cuts were meant to be suspended until Tuesday due to improved performance and lower demand. Let's try and make sense of where we are for you now. Bring in our guest, civil nuclear engineer from Truth and Energy, Hugo Kruger, who joins us now at Life in Paris, I understand. Hugo, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. You know, in the past month alone, we've gone from stage six load shedding to having no load shedding about 24 hours ago. And if anything, that certainly sends a signal that the grid is way more precarious than many of us are willing to admit. Yeah, look, um, I'll sum it up. The issue I have um, at the moment is the variance in, in the load shedding. Why is it going from six to zero to three up and down all the time? And if you take a long variance over the year, it's about four gigawatts up and down. Um, but it does show us uh, something that a lot of engineers and um, analysts have been saying for a very long time. There's never been a lack of capacity at ESCOM. It's simply a question of doing maintenance. Now, the issue we need to address here is why are the units tripping or um, why is the pump storage broken, uh, broken, things of that sort. But it doesn't seem that South Africa needs to even build more power stations to, to, to end load chain, just fix what is broken. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? Um, because that's been the advice for the past decade. And I suppose the other obvious question is, why isn't that being done? I mean, what's your reading around why it's so oh. difficult to follow through on such a clear solution? Well, it's simple. If you look at ESCOM's balance sheet, it tells you the whole story. There's no budget allocated for proper maintenance. ESCOM has a bigger budget for burning diesel than for maintenance. Now, um, you sum up the whole South African situation. South Africa has roughly 50 to 55 gigawatts of capacity, or 5,500 megawatts. I use gigawatts, some people use megawatts. You need about 5% of your stations rotating for maintenance. So 5 gigawatt on routine maintenance, which is what ESCOM has at the moment. Okay, so ESCOM is actually not doing that bad in terms of maintenance, which is planned for. Here's the issue. There's 16 gigawatt of power stations sitting and rusting in the rain. And a question we've been asking for a very long time is why can't we fix them and switch them on? And if you look at ESCOM's financials, you look at what the board is doing, there seems to be no plans to bring on the excess capacity. We've even seen the, the uh, mayor of Pretoria waking up to this, the DA, so they're not better at this, waking up to this a few weeks ago where he said, realized, oh, we have two power stations in Pretoria and we didn't know we could maybe get power from them. So the question we have is why don't we just fix that 16 gigawatt and then load shedding is gone. And when I speak to people in, in industry, the engineers and the uh, executives, they all tell me it can be fixed between 18 months to 24 months, okay? So three years maximum. If you can fix it in three years maximum, why don't we just come up with a budget for ESCOM, Treasury approves it because ESCOM doesn't have the finances for it, and fix what is broken. Yeah, and that is what we've been saying for a long time. Absolutely. And I suppose you can forgive the skeptics among us who are afraid of giving ESCOM any more money, given just how much money we've lost already. I mean, there's Wusilia Power Station, which was meant to be the panacea. And here we are, right? A whole lot more spent than what was budgeted. And still, uh, the, the plant itself is not working as it should. I wonder what you reckon the future then looks like. I mean, you've spoken about the DA, and there's been so much rhetoric about what it will take to fix load shedding and who, in fact, is going to save us from this, uh, from this moment. Um, are you buying any of this, right, this idea that there is a chance to fix it by the end of the year, if in fact the trajectory continues as it's been for the year so far? Um, look, I, I'm always an optimist. So Kuber has to come online. That's about two gigawatts to do. So remember, load shedding is, is three gigawatts, more or less. So if Kuber comes online, you're at one gigawatt. If you have Kusili on top of Kuber, you're out of load shedding. Okay. If what the minister says is going to happen. What concerns me, however, is this four gigawatt of variance up and down. Nobody can plan and work with that. And that's the question that ESCOM needs to address as well, is why is there all of a sudden all these trips in our power stations? My proposal is this. Of that 16 gigawatt that is now standing and rusting in the rain, come up with a proper allocated budget and spend two to three years of good money repairing and refurbishing those power stations. Okay, and do long-term planning while you're continuing with this maintenance. Because I'm really concerned when I see these high variances. I mean, if you look at the U.S. and the European grids, they have standards where load shedding or blackouts, as you should, should, should call it, should be one hour a year 
<laughs> we, we, we have it every day, three to four hours. So we are totally far away from international standards, and that speaks to the resilience of the power station. So you need to invest into infrastructure resilience. But it comes down to that magical question, where is the money going to come from, and do we trust ESCOM to do it? Now, that is a political question. The engineers can't come up with that solution. Engineers can say, look, we need money to fix the maintenance. This is more or less what it's going to cost. In my estimates, it's $1 billion, so it's a 20 billion rand per gigawatt of power stations. It's a lot of money, but it's the same budget ESCOM spends on diesel every year. And we need to come up with that if we want to fix, this, fix the issue. Yeah. And to, how do you get costs down? You have to get good at repairing. Now, I think ESCOM's team is actually very good at repairing stuff at the moment, right? But you need to have a proper engineering team that's properly staffed to fix that. Yeah, you speak about the political influences. I mean, we've also heard of there being an interest in some political circles to keep the status quo going, right? The idea that ESCOM is not working well, ironically, works for some people. Yeah, I mean, look, there's, there's always political economy and interest in any power station around the world, and people make money out of a crisis. So the uh, new bright idea is we're going to send uh, transmission lines to the Northern Cape, and we're just going to connect solar and wind. That's all good and well, except just take into account the German North-South transmission line took something like plus 10 years to build. How long is it going to take to build those lines? I don't know. I mean, they can all theoretically work. Theoretically work. There's an interest from the national gas, natural gas guys, and I'm all in favor of placing natural gas, which is way too import, and then gas can pick up the slack from coal. But my sense is this. There's not enough grift in maintenance. There's not enough money to steal when it comes to repairing plants, but there's a lot of money to steal when it comes to buying new plants and building new infrastructure and things of that sort. And that is where the, the political direction sometimes is going, while people saying, let's just first fix what is broken, and then we can come up with all your wonderful solutions for decarbonization and, and, and who knows what else. Just fix what is broken. And they're not fixing what is broken at the moment. Fascinating. Um, you know better than I do as an engineer about how possible this is, Hugo. But in my mind, it makes no sense that we can go from a couple of days of no load shedding all the way to stage three. How can yeah. we at the very least better manage the variants that you've spoken about. I'm talking about safety nets now, you know, where we can be a bit more prudent, if that's the term, about how we use access energy to, at the very least, prevent us from going through these extremes, as we've seen in the past month. Look, the um, car power ships that are, that are coming online, who are supposed to come online, uh, provided there's no bribes being paid, is not a bad idea. Um, because natural gas in any traditional grid is your safety of supply. So if you have a few ships that uh, say three or four gigawatt, you can allow ESCOM to take some of those units that go up and down and that just break on the fly off line and fix them. But my view is they should fix the existing units that are standing in the rain as well. And that's what they're not doing. So all of it comes down to just properly planning the maintenance. But I get the impression that these plants are so old and have been so destroyed and there's been stories about bad core quality and things coming into it that even the engineers working, they don't have solutions anymore. Sure. Um, yeah. And if that is the case, you need to scrap the asset. And you need to either rebuild it or you need to accept we don't have that 60 gigawatt capacity. And then ESCOM needs to accept that it's no longer a national utility. Um, but again, these are all political questions. The politicians want the engineers to provide the impossible, which is fix ESCOM without any money. And then at the same time, they're talking about breaking up ESCOM and got all these wonderful plans to get private guys online. And I'm sorry, but no engineer, the best engineer in the world, cannot come up with a solution under those conditions. You need to be focused. If we're going to focus on maintenance, that should be the only plan for ESCOM at the moment. But why do we have all other political ambitions coming into the process, and then we're surprised as a country there's load shedding? Suppose it doesn't help that we're also entering an election year next year. Hugo Kruger, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Yet another sobering discussion around the power grid. Really appreciate your time. Hugo is a nuclear engineer from Truth and Energy. Once again, thanks very much indeed.